joining me now is Glenn Ignazio. He's a military expert, retired Air Force Special Operations Commander. Hi there. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. Thank you for being so, on airtight. Let's begin by talking about timing. What does this drone attack on Moscow signal to you? Actually, a significant push for uh, Zelensky to, to push back on Putin and, and try to at least put some, uh, I would say, punches against Moscow. There's been significant launches against Ukraine, mainly their infrastructure, their power grids and so forth. So the attack has been rather significant. And I think this is really one of the things about the new warfare of seeing this actually get to Moscow. If they, they were shot down, it's still one of the largest attacks from Ukraine to Moscow itself. So it's, uh, it's still a significant play by Zelensky. How do you think Russia will retaliate, given that Trump has already asked Putin not to avoid further or asked Putin to avoid further escalation? Yeah, I think they're still going to respond accordingly. They've been sending hundreds of drones, both that are Russian, Iranian made uh, across the board, plus massive attacks. And one of the reasons as we've rolled into this winter and things get colder is they try to hit them at the heart, which is the power of the fuel, everything to actually cause absolute mayhem and suffering to the people. And that's what they've mainly focused on is that type of infrastructure. So that's what Russia's attack has been, whereas the lines of the east have moved a little bit to the left and right. But it's almost like a World War One trench warfare where you don't see much gain back and forth. It just seems like it's, uh, you know, stagnated, even though there's a lot of killing, unfortunately, going on. If Russia does appear to acquiesce, what could we learn about the true nature of the relationship between Donald Trump and Putin? Well, I know that they have a good connection and they always have. And, and here's something that many of us were we're bothered by is when you see an administration, and I'm apolitical, I'll just tell you the way it is, is but when you see an administration that doesn't want to talk to the other side, and that side, which happens to be Putin, is not at the table to discuss any kind of uh, agreement or truce or, or stopping a war, that's a problem. And unfortunately, that's what we've seen. So the idea that there's dialogue is what's most important to bring both Zelensky and Putin to the table. But there's something else that hasn't been utilized, and that's the word ceasefire. So the idea of having a ceasefire immediately is plausible and possible. And at least at that point, it's a starting ground of trying to figure out what to do next. At the same time, Trump also has the power when he comes into power to be able to say to Zelensky, you know what, all the restrictions about where you want to launch, where you fire are now off the table. You can do what you want. So that's a big, heavy hammer to Putin. But I hope that this negotiation, at least this connection they'd have, would at least get to a ceasefire and start stopping the killing, which is what Trump has actually said in the past. Well, as the cliche says, time will tell. Uh, Glenn Ignacio, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Glenn is a military expert, retired Air Force Special Operations Commander.